work is generally um, Southern Africa, not South Africa, um, and the Caribbean and Central and South America. And some countries in those uh, regions have uh, latched on to long-term athletic development in exactly the same way that we use it here, as a basis of their sport uh, and education systems, of taking this stage-by-stage -stage approach. And, and that's fantastic. Uh, some countries have gone further. Um, and, and one that I think is really interesting is uh, Guyana. Now, how many people actually know where Guyana is? Okay, then here's the trick question. What three countries does it border? You, you don't know where it is. Okay, <laughs> you only have a vague idea where it is. But anyway, it is, it's situated on the Atlantic coast of South America. Um, it is interestingly different in that it is an English-speaking country in a predominantly Spanish and Portuguese-speaking uh, continent. And it has strong links to the Commonwealth. They saw the long-term athlete development materials that uh, came from Canada. And they have um, gone flat out in training their uh, national team coaches, their national sport council coaches, uh, and others in using uh, the long-term athlete development principles. But they sparked something different. Their sport policy has five pillars, as opposed to the Canadian one at the time of four. Now, if there's anybody in the room who doesn't know the four Canadian uh, pillars, I'll give you the bastardized version of it. Uh, high performance, excellence, that stream which I think most of us would recognize, a participation stream, more people, more sport, more physical activity over a longer period of their life. Uh, greater capacity to deliver uh, sport, human and um, physical uh, capacity. Um, and lastly, interaction. Better working together of all of the components uh, within the sports system. And I looked to Becky and she's not actually rolling her eyes at my uh, <laughs> brief description. Uh, but if you want to know a great deal more about the Canadian sport policy and the Canadian sports system, identify yourself. This would be the person to talk to to get the truth of what I've just given you here. <laughs> Using the term. Uh, but you know, she will, she's the person to talk to about the Canadian system. They looked at that and said, there's something missing. And what they thought was missing was using sport as a tool. As a tool to attack some of their fundamental problems. And Guyana, like many developing countries, has an incredibly large number of young people. And they are faced with uh, situations which I expect will resonate with people from a number of, of different countries. Uh, high unemployment amongst their youth, high levels of HIV AIDS infection and transmission, high levels of, of drug use, high levels of gang involvement, and high levels of crime. And they said, why can we not use a sport as an intervention tool? And kind of the light bulb went off in my mind. Um, and fortuitously, I was also doing an evaluation for Commonwealth Games Canada at the same time of uh, international development activities in Southern Africa, and I went to Southern Africa, and I watched some really good people who were working incredibly hard with children and youth to try to uh, teach them the skills of life. And what struck me, uh, and perhaps because of my long-term athlete development background, was that it didn't matter whether the kid was nine or 19, they were doing the same things with those kids. And it was like, this is, this is not a good idea. So, take those two ideas. I, I've just come to Southern Africa, and I've seen good people doing good work, 
you know, good people doing <laughs> good works, but not necessarily doing the right thing with younger children. And on the other hand, a government saying, how could we use sport as a tool to develop our youth? And so from that, um, Commonwealth Games Canada um, and three or four of us within Commonwealth Games Canada sat down and said, let's extend long-term athlete development, long-term player development, whatever language you prefer, into a long-term social development framework using sport. And so uh, if you've been to all the sessions over the last few days, you'll recognize that in the Canadian long-term athlete development model, we look at what do you need to do in strength, in speed, in suppleness, in psychology, at each stage of development. And uh, if you went to Ishman's presentation, you'll know that we've gone from the five S's uh, to the ten S's as we expand the program into version two. We asked at Commonwealth Games a slightly different question. In athlete development, the question is essentially, what do you do at each stage of human development to give the adult the greatest chance of success? Success being engagement in physical activity for health, or success being engagement in physical activity for high performance sport. So we took that and we asked a parallel set of questions. What do you need to do at each stage of human development to give the individual the best chance of being a successful adult in life? And that generally revolves around building good relationships, being part of the community, conflict reduction, uh, having some employment opportunities. And we, we developed a program that used sport to teach each of those critical uh, life skills at each stage of human development. And we've called this long-term social development uh, through sport. We've modeled it and we've tried parts of it. I'd love to say we've tried all of it, but that's a huge undertaking. But we have developed some programs that have been designed on this basis. I am happy to share information about it with anybody who would like more details. But there is a critical component and it's what I want to leave you with. When we look at international development using sport, I would actually argue that overwhelmingly what we see is youth development using games. I am not knocking that. There is great value in that, but there is a flaw. And the flaw in that approach is that almost all such programs are entirely funded by external agencies and they are delivered by volunteers or in some cases not well paid professionals whose funding comes from the international agencies. If that aid stops, what do you think is going to happen to all of those programs? They are going to die. And so part of our approach with this long-term social development through sport, which is clearly a, an offspring of Canadian long-term athlete development, is that our activities have two purposes. The first purpose is to obviously impact social development. But the second purpose, equally important, is that it improves the sport skill of the individuals we are working with. Because if we can show that our programs both enhance social development and enhance sports skill, then we have a better chance of engaging local coaches and local sports organizations and therefore have a fighting chance of making these programs sustainable over long periods of time. 
if we go to Botswana or we go to Barbados or we go to El Salvador, there'll be a football association there 50 years from now, 100 years from now. I'm not sure that the externally funded programs uh, funded by the international donors will be there in 50 or 100 years. So unless we can embed the social development work in programs that are local, sustainable, ongoing, and run by local coaches, I think we will have failed in what we're doing. And so, as I say, uh, Ishvan has very much been this uh, proselytizer of the athlete development side of long-term athlete development. And I'm the one who's taken some of those ideas and tried to expand it into a much broader social engagement program, but clearly based on the same principles that the long-term athlete development model uh, is based on. And so this uh, movement from Canada is expanding both geographically uh, out to other countries, but also it's expanding in its concept and its breadth. And for many developing countries, that kind of using long-term athlete development as a youth development tool um, has a great deal of appeal. And then the last thing I'm going to say is something that has become increasingly apparent to me as I have worked in a number of countries. One of the very great strengths of long-term athlete development and to a lesser extent long-term social development through sport has been the fact that we have documents that we can go into government offices with and we can explain much more clearly what it is we are trying to do in developing children and youth through to adulthood, both in sport and in social development. It's given us a common language with health and education. It's given us a framework that government officials can look at and say, yes, I understand what you're trying to do. So that common language, that common framework has been extremely valuable in changing government opinions about the value of sport. So, geographic expansion, and conceptual expansion uh, have probably been the more highlights of the last four or five years for us in long-term athlete.